Hey guys, it's Vince. Today, unfortunately, we're going to be taking another sad look at a client system that was purchased from supposedly a professional vendor of CNC plasma systems. And I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let you guys judge what you're looking at. Um, to me, I know what I feel. I've said this before. And I think once again, reiterating in more and more of these videos, seeing what exactly has to be done when you're rectifying something like this. So right here is the file for the client. He sent me over some pictures. Before we touch on the pictures, I want to go over uh, this client's email right here. And of course, I've removed all his personal information. There is no information regarding the company. I'm not discussing that. You guys will find whoever you're finding and hopefully, uh, once again, look into a consultation if you're not certain of what you're looking at and I can get with you and save you literally thousands. This man paid $7,000 for this system. And again, it's really atrocious what he has to do to, to fix it. So let's read the email. Hello, I just ran into your YouTube channel and was I was pleased and thankful at the same time for the content you produce and put out to the CNCers out there. So I'm novice at best with CNC machines. I have a 4x8 system from Blank Plasma and I'm running a Hypotherm 45 XP with the machine torch. Well, we all know the Hypotherm is an excellent uh, cutter when it comes to plasmas. I've been having problems here and there for no rhyme or reason. The main issue is my z-axis never wants to remember zero. It always goes out of whack while running a file and sometimes it dives to the point where it scrapes on the metal its cutting file. <clears throat> I notice nothing is grounded on my machine, controller box, computer, etc. I also notice that nothing is shielded. There's a few small Cat5 wire with shielding in the controller box, however the shielding is not grounded to anything. The wires from the breakout board to the drivers are not shielded. Also, the 22-4 wires from the drivers to the stepper motors are not shielded or grounded either. I've attached some photos for reference. I will be driving a ground rod into my garage floor this weekend and doing a star point system on the CNC frame to individually ground everything. Do you think grounding and rewiring with shielded wire will help resolve these issues? Hope to hear from you soon. <clears throat> now, guys, this is extremely sad in the sense that this really is probably the worst plasma system I've seen released to date. And I'm being honest with this. Uh, I'm going to let you look at this and see exactly what we got going on here. First thing we'll notice is that he's running 22 gauge wires for his motor cables. And of course, no shielding present. You can see the leads extruding here. There's nothing coming out of here. You see nothing there. I went over this carefully with him on the phone after we discussed everything. We went into a consultation. And again, he was excellent about sending me pictures in detail. And let's look at what's just, you know, glaringly obvious to, to those that are familiar with plasma systems. And that's the one thing I want you guys really to pay attention to. Whether you're dealing with somebody who's done this before or not, the first thing you're going to recognize, number one, before anything else, even if you're a novice, is wire management. When we see wires like this everywhere, it already tells you that the guy that did this is either a person that was in an extreme rush, which is very possible, or a person who knows absolutely nothing about what he's doing. And I'm going to clarify that point right here. We're going to come over here, and this right here is the THC that is used in this controller. Now, just so everybody knows, this is the Proma manual for the compact THC controller known as the SD model. Now, as we look at this, I'm going to come down, and what I want to show you that's obvious, once again to those that have experience with this field, is that you can see to reduce the possibility of the short circuit entering the CNC system, again, just be um, lenient on their English, uh, again, this is from Poland, the connection should be made with a shielded cable. The shielding must be connected to grounding on the CNC system side. Do not connect the shielding to the THC controller side. Now look, guys, he can't say he did any of that because he didn't even use shielded cable. Okay, we can see here how this is diagrammed. All they had to do was read the user's manual. I see this all the time, and he didn't even read the user's manual. We look at this coming back to the drives, and we'll get into that. Essentially, it's just a mess inside that system. So, and we also have, and I don't know what's going on here, it looks like we have a jumper on our e-stop. I've never, ever seen that. Um, we got two leads coming through. Again, odd. Let's keep going. This is where it really gets interesting. Um, in all my years of, of online reviews on other people's systems, one thing I have never ever seen, whether it be Chinese or um, US based, and this of course is a US based system, is a knot in the cable used as a stress relief entering the enclosure's rear with a giant hole in the back. I've never ever seen that. Maybe you guys have, I've never seen that. But let's look at some other interesting details here. 
And, I'll, and again, I'm hoping to hear in the comments what you feel about this system. I, I really want to know. First, we can see this plug here. It looks like a plug. It actually looked like a ferrite to me. And I contacted, when I actually discussed it with the client, he said to me that, no, those are the plugs for my motor cables. And I said, really? Okay. Well, when we looked here, we've got a gland and we have a cable coming through the back plate and then going over. And with that plug, that's how his motor cables plug in. Well, when they design this system, unlike the mass producers of CNC controllers, they decided not to use GX16s or other type of ports that mount directly into the rear enclosure. They decided just to run a cable that's run with no shielding or anything to the motors and, of course, to the drives. And this is what you're left with. And when we look carefully here, and I want you guys really to look at this, we've got a dual lead ferrule, and then we have ferrules here, but then we have other leads going in. And we have a lot of jumpers over here. I mean, it's just random chaos. But we'll keep going through this because, like I said, I've never seen anything with a wire stress relief done in a format of a knot, nor have I ever seen motor cables where just plugs are wired directly to the drives with a lead going through the back plate. I've never seen that. And again, we can see right here, there is no shielding. So, amazing, it gets worse than that. We'll look at this angle. Now this angle is even more impressive because we can see how all leads are terminalized inside the drivers. Now we know ter driver terminal blocks are used either for rules or a lead that's already been tinned. Now when we look at this, we can see there's obvious a lot of problems. We see tandem leads going in and all you're going to do if you do that is you're going to either have all kinds of problems with connections or you're going to find that you're going to damage a terminal block. There is no reason to do this other than somebody who's either in an extreme rush or really doesn't know what they're doing. And in this case, I personally feel it's a combination of both. <clears throat> Here we go again. He took a picture of this because I could not believe what I was seeing. And that's exactly what they did. They took the shielded cable, knotted it, and that's what's supposed to be their stress relief. We also see here, and I'm going to discuss this in a minute, the CNC drive UC100. We also see a breakout board that requires 5 volts. Now, most breakout boards do. The issue is this, when you run with 5 volts, not so much to deal with power. In this case, it's just generating power to the board. Therefore, it's not sending signals. It's just going to provide the board power so that it will function. The issue is when you're running with 5 volts on any circuit inside your system, especially a circuit that's going to be sending signals, you're always at risk for EMI penetration because plasma systems generate the most EMI. Again, it's all over my channel. Uh, you can look up grounding, just search in the uh, search bar on top of my channel for grounding and you'll find the link in PDF, which I sent to this client, discussing proper grounding for a system. Let's continue. Now, this is where things get interesting. UC100. The UC100 in general is a good motion controller, but the things to consider are it's a USB device. That means that all of its signal transmission is done through 5 volts. It's also done through the cable that CNC drive provides you. Unfortunately, that cable is really a weak form of EMI mitigation due to the fact that it's not a, a really high quality cable. But that being said, even if you use a high quality cable, you still are at risk with a plasma system of properly getting your signals transponded and that can cause loss of control. Am I correct on this or am I just making this up? Well, let's take a look. I have an email from Balsas because I early on wanted to discuss, matter of fact, this is from 2017. Uh, I asked him, I said, what would cause the UC100 to disconnect? Because I wanted to provide this information to everybody out there because I feel it's something that's really grossly overlooked. When I discuss with you guys that Ethernet is the most stable platform, I figure I'll go right from the manufacturer's mouth and then you can hear exactly what they have to say. So again, there can be three possible causes for dropping connection. Number one, the USB suspended function in the Windows Power Management is enabled. Make sure to disable it. He goes on to discuss that. Number two, ground noise problems. Look at the size of that paragraph, guys. Look at the size. This issue is basically that the control system generates too much EMI noise and the noise affecting the computer's ground and so the USB port and the UC100. So therefore, we already know we have problems. Why would you use that controller with a plasma system if you knew what you were doing? You wouldn't, especially for seven grand. That's crazy. Uh, mostly the problem happens when the spindle switched on or off. Now he's talking about just a standard CNC. He's not discussing a plasma system. 
or another high power device is switching on, henceforth a plasma system, and off sucking a large amount of current quickly causing voltage level change on the grounding of the system. The ground point is the same for the computer and for the control box and usually connected also to the neutral so this noise gets also to the computer. And he goes on and on and you guys can pause this video and read this but I really want to just cover the key points here. Right here I highlighted what we really need to focus on. And one more thing about this that we also have Ethernet devices and of course you guys know I do support the UC400 it works excellent and the UC300 also they're both Ethernet which work with Ethernet connection instead of USB. Ethernet is an isolated communication so it works better in electrically noisy industrial environment than USB. The Ethernet data is sent through small RF isolation transformers which are built into the PC motherboard and they are also built into the RJ45 connector of the UC300 and UC400. So the above mentioned issue can happen with Ethernet because there are no common ground points. Now guys, he said common ground points but we're not even discussing the noise generated from the plasma. So keep that in mind and that's not it. A computer issue as well. If the computer gets overloaded, can also cause communication to stop. Again, I don't feel that's the case. That's not what we're really going to see. We're not really going to see problems with Windows management. I very, very rarely see that. These are the two problems we see. Ground noise problems and also looking at you know how the system is built regarding shielding and how the system is built regarding all of the fundamentals that you must know when you're dealing with a plasma. Like how about grounding the chassis? Let's continue. Okay. Now we can see the chassis and we can see what we got here and uh, there's the controller and I can't believe they're proud to put made in the USA on that after seeing what we've seen. And now of course this client has to go through, measure all of the cables that are going to be required for the machine. Then we also have our grounding point right here and he is using the required bus bar. This is the proper size bus bar to use on a chassis of this size. Now another key point I want to discuss, if your chassis is powder coated or painted, all paint, all powder coat from wherever you're going to ground has to be removed. Because if you're not getting conduction, it's not doing anything. Now I know that sounds like common sense to most people, but again, I've had a lot of clients unfortunately do that and find out the hard way, oh, I did all that work for nothing, now i got to remove all the paint, go back, everything. It's a lot of work, guys, to say the least. And then here's the cable chain, okay? And when you guys are grounding, when you have a chassis this big, again, 4 by 8 you want to make sure that you're grounding at at least four points all the way around that chassis. You also need to ground the gantry, okay? That's an absolute must. Now, he's going to use a grounding rod, and once he uses a grounding rod, he'll be all set to come right over, run that ground strap. And that's what I recommend you guys use is a ground strap. You're going to run your ground strap right directly to here, run the grounding rod similar to over here or very close. And then you're going to run your ground strap over and run ground strap to all areas of this chassis that require grounding. Now, that's just one step of this retrofit process for this system. Okay, the next step is going to do all the motor cables. They all have to be... Uh, redone and preferably put in aviation ports to plug his motor cables in. So again, keeping this all in mind, the kind of work that's involved with this, it's massive guys. It's a lot of work and what's really unfortunate is it should have never had to happen. This happened because unfortunately he didn't find me in time. I do still hear that. The only thing I ask you guys to do is do a Google search so you can go over everything. You can see here where the cable chain is, I don't know exactly how he's going to run this. Uh, the unfortunate side of this is real close to the ground, but there's really not much you can do. So these are things to consider as well. We can see how dirty it is. And again, moving that close to the ground, you're going to get a lot of water on it, different things, especially with his water table. So you want to pay attention to how everything is set up because we were just going over him running grounding strap. We want to make sure that if he does run any cables through here, that he's going to have the proper cable used where flexing is going to be required. So we need ultra flex cable. So again, guys, I hope that this video has been helpful to you. I hope once again, you've seen that it's not uncommon anymore even now, and you know, we've seen an evolution of these systems come out that vendors are still releasing systems that are not built properly. And when I say that, just because they say they use shielded cable, ask them, open the controller, send me some pictures. I love your, I love your system, send me some pictures, I wanna see it. You don't know what you're looking at, contact me, we can do a consultation. You know, it'll take 
maybe 30 minutes and it'll save you a lot of time and effort if you don't have to go back and retrofit. Because now think about this. Not only did he have to pay for a consultation with me, now he has to pay to buy all the components to retrofit this system to do it right. So think about it like that. Once again, I hope it's helped you. Thank you for your support. I want to hear your comments. Take care.